Screen then. Record. Record. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This class is in memory of Jared Orchem, and today we are learning Parshat Re'ei, and we will learn a very, very important question. But before we get to the question, as usual, we'll start a little bit inside just to warm up, <laughs> and then we'll get to the real thing. Page one thirty. Seven. One thirty six. Chapter twelve. These are the statutes and the laws that you will guard to fulfill in the land that Adonai, God of your forefathers, has given you to inherit all the years that you are alive on the land. You must obliterate all the places where the nations worshipped whom you are inheriting, their gods, on the high mountains and on the hills and under every evergreen tree. You are to break apart their altars, and you are to smash their pillars, and there are Ash Asherahs? Asherahs, yeah. Are you to it's the name of an idol. Oh. Are you to the burn and fire, and the statues of their gods are you to cut down, and you are to obliterate their name from that place. Okay, page 138. Do not act this way to deny your God. Rather, at the place that Adonai your God chooses from all your tribes to set his presence there, will you seek his presence and come there? Okay. Here God speaks about the place that God will choose. And you'll go there and you seek him. Where is the place that God will choose? In Israel. Where in Israel is God going to choose? Eventually Jerusalem. Eventually. But God doesn't say to you what's the place you're going to choose. Why God doesn't say it? Rashi starts a whole thing. Where is the place? First of all, Rashi on page 139, number 5, you look on the Rashi, a little Rashi, seek his presence. This refers, go ahead. To the tabernacle at Shiloh. At Shiloh. And let's I'll give you a little history. The Jewish people entered the land of Israel after four years in the desert. In the desert, they had a portable sanctuary, right? Then they entered Israel. For 14 years, they were conquering the land and, app and apportioning the land with Joshua. At that time, the temple was in a place that's called Gilgal, right? Then they went further a little bit. And, the Imper and, and in Gilgal was still the same portable sanctuary that they had in the desert. They kept in Gilgal. Then they went to Shiloh. In Shiloh, it became a little more permanent. They built up the building, the walls were from stone. But the roof, they used the same roof that they used in the, the, of the portable sanctuary. They wanted to make a statement that it's not per, per, uh, uh, permanent. That it's going to be maybe later. But the Jews did not go, they were in Shiloh for how long? 320. More, more. 369 years. Mm -hmm. They were basically, they left Shiloh, not because they wanted, because the Philistines destroyed the temple in Shiloh, that they moved on. The Jews never went anywhere on their own, by the way. We left Egypt. Pharaoh just threw us out of Egypt, chased us out of Egypt. That's God told Moses, Pharaoh not only will not keep them in Egypt, he will throw them out of Egypt. Chase them out of Egypt. That would exhaust. In Israel, how we went from place to place, we were in Shiloh. Then after in Shiloh, we went to Givon, to Nov. After in Nov, we were, I think, 14 years, so in Givon. Then we went to Nov. Then eventually we went to the temple, to, the, to Jerusalem. Then here God says, when you come to the land of Israel, it's in the Bible, a thousand times, right? You come to the land, you go to Abraham, you told Isaac, you told Jacob. It comes to Jerusalem, God does not mention Jerusalem in the Bible. You know, every time, one of the arguments the Israelis, the Jews have against the, against the, the for us, that Israel, that Jerusalem belongs to the Jews and not to the Muslims, because they say in Quran it's not mentioned Jerusalem even once. In the Bible, in the Bible, seven hundred times. Zion, Jerusalem, different versions. It's true, but not completely true. In the five books of Moses, Jerusalem is not mentioned. 
And here he says, when you come to the land, the, the place that God will choose. Rashi says, oh, it's Mishkan Shiloh, it's Shiloh. That was the chosen place, not even Jerusalem. Continue, number six. On page 139, number six. Yeah, yeah, in the text. You say in the text, in top. You are to bring there your burnt offering and your sacred offering, and your dishes and the elevation of your hands, and your pledges and your donations, and the firstborn of your cattle and your flocks. You are to eat there before Adonai, your God, and you will be happy with the sum of the, your handwork, you and your household, and has blessed you, Adonai your God. Okay, that Hashem says you bring there, wherever the chosen place is going to be, you bring there your burnt offering, your sacrifices, your tithes, your uh, first food, everything you bring there. And you will eat it there in Jerusalem. Why do you have to bring the tithe? The certain type of tithe that you your portion from your from your from your uh, produce, you have to take to Jerusalem and eat it there. That was a part of the mitzvahs. You go there, you celebrate where? There. Where is there? Nobody knows. Okay, continue. You may not do everything we do here today, each what is upright in his eyes. Here we do whatever we want kind of thing. We offer sacrifices anywhere we want. When you come to the land of Israel and you live a designated place, you are not allowed to offer one offering anywhere else. It was only one altar throughout the whole world you could offer sacrifices. Now the whole Torah speaks about sacrifices, sacrifices. One place. If you live in Solon now, you, you, never, you never see a sacrifice in your life. Only they can send you online you know, little videos, you know. What was uh, when Elijah went to Mount Carmel? Carmel? He went to Mount Carmel. That was a, a temporary change. And prophets have the power to make temporary changes. That if the prophet comes and tells you a true prophet, that proved to be a true prophet, he always the credentials and we already... He comes and says, God told me today I should do this, is allowed. But if, if, if the prophet would come and say, God told me that from today we should every time offer sacrifice in Mount Carmel, for example, we, will, we wouldn't listen to him. Go ahead. There were different Jewish groups in it throughout history who picked different spots in Jerusalem. There were, there were the Samaritans who picked up on Shechem. There were, That's not Jerusalem. <coughs> yeah, exactly. There were, there were those in uh, another group that went down to Egypt, to, to Lantopolis or someplace yes. like that. Yeah, is it that they're interpreting this particular term where God is chosen just simply differently? I mean, how we know that this is the Jerusalem is the chosen place? Then really, did we need know anything about Jerusalem until who was King, the one King about King Till David? We didn't know anything about Jerusalem, or we had some type of connection to Jerusalem. Well, Abraham had a connection. Ah, Abraham. What was Abraham's connection to Jerusalem? Uh, he took his ties back there to the the. Uh, Kingly uh, priest Bani, of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Jacob, Jacob, laid, oh, well, Jacob laid down his yes, head on yes. the Both of them are short, are short one, by the way. But first of all, when he came back from the war to save Sodom and Gomorrah, right? The war to save Sodom and Gomorrah. In the beginning, Abraham saved them. Gave them another chance. Just always give another chance. Then he came back. And the king, Malkitzedek, the king of Shalem, came out to greet them. Then the Talmud tells us, Rashi says, Melech Shal the king of Shalem, where is Shalem? Shalem was the original Jerusalem. It's one place. Then Abraham offered Isaac as an as a, as a offer on the Mount Moriah, and he named the mountain, God will see, Hashem Ireh. Then Shalem was a name from before. <coughs> Ire was a name later. Ire Shalem makes Yerushalayim. Mm -hmm. That's how the name Jerusalem came about. Mm -hmm. Okay, you yeah, go uh, ahead. So on the, the name, the, it, it's the, what is Shalem? It's complete. related to peace. It's complete. complete. And the uh, mountain? Ire, the, Ire means, Ira could mean fear, could be seen also, you have to be seen. God wants that's the place that you should supposed to be see God and to be seen. Lirot velerot. That Yerushalayim means Yerushalayim is a combination of a complete fear of God. That's one of the meaning of Yerushalayim. 
What, what about you know, all these things that took place on the uh, Mariah, right? Oh, but the truth is, they said Jacob was taking a nap there, right there. He had a famous dream with the stones, according to the Talmud, was Jerusalem. But he fought it. According to the Talmud, Noah offered his sacrifices when he came out from the ark and at, 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 the, at, the, at the Temple Mount. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And even before that, Adam and Eve, when they offered sacrifices, they offered, that's what the, my man says, they offered right there at the Temple Mount. I know your question. <laughs> you are asking if they mounted the Mount Ararat, they came out in Turkey, they came out of the Ark in Turkey, how oh, they made it to Jerusalem. Technical, technical problems never worried us. <laughs> Big ski slope, you know. Quite a joke. You know. Who said that doesn't mean that five minutes after they came out from the ark, they offered the sacrifices. Could be it took them a year until they made it to Jerusalem, and then they offered the sacrifices. Fair enough. Doesn't have to be right there, right? He lived 900 years, he had time. He took his time. <laughs> <laughs> now, Adam and Eve, and the, the Talmud concludes, Adam and Eve were created for the Temple Mount. That was the place God took dirt and created man, right? We really did it. Garden of Eden, so where is the beginning of Adam and Eve? At the Temple Mount. That's why the Dome of the Rock, the Rock, the Rock is the place where this, this is it. Now, if everybody knew, if Adam and Eve knew where to go to offer sacrifices, and Noah knew where to go to offer sacrifices, and Abraham knew that it was a very desired piece of real estate. That's why we don't mention it. My friend, you think you're the first one to ask the question. Let's continue. <laughs> Learn a little more. We are in page 141, number 9, I think. Three. For you will not ha have come as yet to the peace and to the territory that Hashem your God has given you. Then Rashi says the peace and territory. Look what Rashi says in number nine. For you will not have come come. Throughout these fourteen, 14 years, years, the fourteen years of conquering the land, you didn't come to the peace as yet. Continue to next. The, this refers to Shiloh. The this territory. refers to. Shiloh. The territory, this refers to Jerusalem. Refers to Shiloh, refers to Jerusalem. Not mentioned. In the book of Deuteronomy, 21 times are written to the chosen place, to the place that God will choose, to the Levis, Ahin, Ahel. Jerusalem is unmentioned. Let's just get, it, get you a little more irritated. Continue. <laughs> When, when you cross the Yarden mm -hmm. and settle in the land that Hashem your God is apportioning to you and he has granted you peace from all your enemies around and you will live secure um, continue, continue. Let, let it be that let it be that the place where Hashem your God chooses to place his presence therein it is there you shall bring all that I am commanding you your burnt offerings and your holy offerings, your tithes and your hand offerings, and your choice promissory offerings that you pledge to Hashem. Okay, then it says the place that you, Rashi gets into big details, the place. Rashi says in number 11, let it be the place. You want to read Mr. Olgin? Yeah. Let it be at the place. Build for yourselves the chosen sanctuary in Jerusalem. Build for yourselves the chosen sanctuary? Okay. Go this ahead. is as is said concerning David. David. It was when the king had settled in his palace and Adonai had granted him peace on every side from all his enemies. And then the king said to the prophet, No some, look here, I am settled in a place of cedar wood while well, the ark of God languishes amidst the curtain. Then he says, what Rashi is trying to bring here, then we need to build a place for God. We cannot just let him sit in a tent. And he quotes it from the book of, the, of, book of uh, Samuel. Yeah, from the book of Samuel, how King David, after he settled himself and he built himself a palace in Jerusalem, and he turns to, King, to the Nathan the prophet and he tells him, look, I'm sitting in a settled place. And the house of God is in a tent. I want to build the house of God. 
And then Nathan told him, in the beginning he told him, yeah, yeah, good idea. <coughs> then Nathan went home, and Hashem came to him and told him, hmm. not David, too much blood on his hand. Solomon will build a person, not build a temple. Then that's the place that you are talking about. Let's continue the Rashi. Is it there you should bring? Go ahead. The bottom of the page. You go ahead. The discussion above concerns Shiloh, while the discussion here concerns Jerusalem. This is why Scripture separates them by granting permission between them. From the time that Shiloh was laid waste and they arrived at, at Nov, and Nov was laid waste, and they arrived at Gibbon. Mm -hmm. Personal Obama altars were permitted. What's that? Oh, for a short, what, do, what is the whole thing here? God tells the Jewish people, now you can offer sacrifices in your backyard. The moment we have a specific place, you're not allowed to offer a, anywhere else. The Bama means an altar that you can build in your own backyard. That for a short time, the after the destruction of Shiloh, you were allowed to offer sacrifices anywhere you wanted. And that's what he yeah, says. Until they arrived at Jerusalem. Exactly. Okay, we'll continue the text inside, number 12. <coughs> page 143, number 12, in top of the page. You are to rejoice in the presence of Hashem your God, you and your sons and your daughters, your male slaves and your female slaves, and the Levite who is in your cities, for he has no portion or territory with you. Mm -hmm. Take heed, lest you offer up your burnt offerings anywhere you envision as proper, solely in the place that Hashem chooses. Okay, wait, before we go, continue. Okay. Something very important in the Rashi, bottom of the Rashi, page 143, the last Rashi. Anywhere you take it, anywhere not to offer effort, offering anywhere you want. What is Rashi saying? This place is a negative commandment over the matter. Anywhere, no, no, you, no, envision, no. anywhere you envision is proper, which occurs to you. Next page, the Rashi. However, however, you may bring an offering by prophetic instruction, as with Eliyahu at Mount Carmel. Uh huh. If a prophet is allowing you to do a, a specific time and one time thing, yes. A permanent time now. Would you mind to turn on the air conditioning anymore? I'm dying here. <laughs> okay. Number 14. Continue. One of your, of one of your tribes in... Uh -huh. Oh, I'm sorry. Solely in the place that Hashem chooses within one of your tribes, there are you to offer up your burnt offerings. Solely there, in the place that Hashem will choose. And there are you to do everything that I am commanding mm -hmm. you. Except with the fullness of your appetite, you may slaughter and eat. Oh, well, then we'll go there. Okay. First, we want to read Rashi number 14. Of one of your tribe. I have and one question, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. What's okay, so all this, we're discussing about them um, um, offering sacrifices in Jerusalem, let's say. But they don't know, they're not told where Jerusalem is. They, no, it's not the place that God so, will choose. So they're just kind of like wandering to the place? Yeah. Just See, before for 369 years they did it there? in Shiloh. Oh, so how they how they find how they found Jerusalem? Yeah. Uh, obviously they had a tradition. They knew about Abraham with the sacrifice. They knew. They knew. They knew. They had an eye on where the place is. But it wasn't yet called Jerusalem. It wasn't called I mean, Jerusalem. I mean, it didn't yet exist, so they can't. It exists not with the name Jerusalem, but it exists as Shalem. Mount right. Moriah was known. Right. The place was there. I mean, the place was not underwater. The place was existing. Right. Not with the name Jerusalem. You're right. The name was there. I mean, the, the city was there. The place was there. God, for some strange reason, doesn't want to name it. He do, it's not that he names another place. He doesn't name a place. He just leaves himself the, the permission to decide later. We'll see where it's going to be the place. We'll see. Israel was promised to Abraham from day one. Jerusalem, we'll see. Do we see parallels with this in, in, uh, in the desert where we're following the pillar of cloud uh, around and God is leading us in different areas and says stop here and move? Is this supposed to be a direct parallel to that? I think so. I think so. I think so. Well, there is even a bigger question. We'll get to it. 
Let's see the Rashi number 14. In Benjamin's portion above, however it is said. Because the Torah says, one of one of, it will be in the place of being of one of your tribes. Which tribe? He says, Rashi says, in Benjamin's portion. Of all your tribes, how can this be? When David purchased the threshing site from Haravna, the Jebu site, he gathered the gold from all the tribes still in, in the threshing site was Benjamin's territory. The place belonged to Benjamin. But when, Je when King David bought Jerusalem, Jerusalem is one of the three places that the Jewish people paid full money. Hebron, the cave of Machpelah by Abraham, Shechem, Nablus by Jacob, and, and, and the Mount Moriah, Temple Mount by King David. When he bought it, even that officially it belongs to the tribe of Benjamin, the Temple Mount is divided in a half. A half belongs to the tribe of Benjamin. The other half belongs to the tribe of Judah. Benjamin is the only of foliers, I think. Judah is the rest of it. But the, but the bottom line is this place was bought by money from all the tribes. Then it really doesn't belong to a specific tribe. It belongs to everybody. Jerusalem was not divided to tribes. Why? Because nobody should be able to say it belongs to me. So King David purchased the land, but the money was from the tribes. He collected it from all the tribes purposely, that it should be something that belongs that's to everybody. That's something you, I mean, I didn't know that. You know, that I mean, that, that's why we come to classes. I didn't know, <laughs> I, I didn't know quite a few things until this afternoon, so you'll see. <laughs> Number 15, in the text. What a real estate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We were you when it was the real real estate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just the other day, somebody told me that they, 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 he has a friend who bought an apartment in Jerusalem, in Rehavia, not far from the wall, for a million dollars. It's it's every square feet, he told me, it's a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars a square feet. How much is in Cleveland, in Solon, a, a square really, feet? Really, it's like around um, 100 to 200 dollars. 100 to 200, a thousand dollars. Corey, you make a liar. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the wrong place. You yeah, sell one apartment there, you can retire. I tell you, if you're a realtor in Miami Beach, you can make a million dollars. No, but in Jerusalem, I'm going to the second so promise. Let's if you a make a liar, go ready yeah, to Jerusalem. Make a way to Florida. You'll, it's easier to get to. You'll make yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Just go vacation tomorrow. There you go. Okay, page 144, number 15. Except with the fullness of your appetite, you may slaughter and eat meat in accord with the blessing of Adonai your God that he has given you in all your cities. The richly unclean and the clean will eat it like the deer and the gazelle. You are allowed to slaughter and eat meat, but it's not a sacrifice. However, you may not eat the blood on the earth, or earth uh, are you to spill it like water. You are not allowed to eat blood, and it's written in the Torah quite a few times, how much you are not allowed to eat blood. Go ahead. You are not permitted to eat in your cities the tithe of your grain or your wine and your olive oil and the firstborn of your cattle and your flocks and all your pledges that you pledge and your donations and the truma separation of your hands. Okay, now we'll go to the Rashi tomb, back the page, page 146. You are not permitted. Then we'll go on page 147. There is a first bold line you are not permitted, literally not able. Dr. Kosser, you want to read it? On page 147, the, you see the mm -hmm. Rashi? Mm -hmm. Very Rabbi important Yehusha Rashi. Ben Karchas Rabbi said, Yehoshua ben Karcha said, go ahead. You are able, but are not permitted. Similarly, the Yavuzites who dwelt in Jerusalem, the sons of Yehuda were not permitted, literally not able, to drive out. Okay. You know what he's saying here? He quotes from the book of Joshua. Right? It's the book of Joshua. Um, 1797 is the book of Joshua, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yes, sure. Yes, yes. 15, yes. 15, very good. In the book of Joshua, as is here, there is all description how the tribe of Judah and Caleb, famous Caleb, with his family, conquered the whole territory of Judah. A part of territory of Judah is, the, is Jerusalem, right? He said that the Temple Mount is divided in half. It's written there that Yevusite would dwell in Jerusalem 
the sons of Yehuda were not able to drive out. They were able to drive out everybody. It comes to one time, they were not able. The, the Yebusite, the little Yebusite place, they, could, they couldn't do it. The Trashi says, what means not able? Not permitted. What is here not able? Not permitted. What does it mean? We are not permitted to drive them out. The Jebusite of Jerusalem, we were not permitted to drive them out of Jerusalem. Why not? The real question is, we just mentioned before, how long took the Jews until they made it to Jerusalem? 269 years? At least. More. Yeah, oh, more, more, because they another were also in years, Another places. 14 years? So 410 years? years? 410 years, yeah. Until until, uh, until um, Solomon built the temple was 440 years since they came out from Egypt, since they entered the land of Israel. 480 years since they left Egypt. 440 years in Israel, they couldn't make it to Jerusalem. What's going on there? Why it took so long? It's a question that I had all my life. Why the Jews never made it to Jerusalem? They lingered and lingered and slept. The holy place, the city, the, the, the chosen place, the chosen city. Jerusalem is the heart of every Jew. We now pray towards Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is Jerusalem. Our guns are talking the guns in the right? We never stop talking about Jerusalem. The whole prayer book is about Jerusalem. The whole Amida. Abraham over the sun, I learned when I was three years old in Jerusalem. No, I was there in Jerusalem. Jacob slept. I learned that when I was in Haida when I was four years old. I could never grasp the idea why it took the Jews so long to get to Jerusalem. Until this afternoon. Wow. Isn't, it, isn't it embarrassing? <laughs> why? That I should, I should have known then, 30 years ago. Is it better to know now? Better than ever, yeah, I know, I agree. <laughs> Why King David? Oh, King David finally came to Jerusalem. Shalom Aleichem, good Shabbos. He was the Jewish people. Wouldn't be the focus of the Jewish people if I would be Joshua. Where would I go first? Or at least the direction. Not only this, when you look in the Bible, in the book of Joshua, they all conquered everything around Jerusalem. The Jews side, they couldn't conquer the people of Judah couldn't come. And then it's written the same thing about the people of Benjamin. They couldn't conquer the city of Judah. The, the Jebusite and in, in, in in Jerusalem. It's written in Jerusalem clearly. In the story, there is a story, Pelagish Begiva, a whole story. We spoke about it. The woman was, was raped and was killed. He passed by Jerusalem. He told this guy, let's not stop there. It's not a Jewish city. We'll go to another Jewish city. That was a mistake, but that's okay. But it tells you that everything was Jewish around. In Jerusalem, the Jebusites are sitting there. Why? A heavily fortified city. You can conquer the whole land of Israel. You cannot conquer this little place. Je are the Jebusites mentioned in, in our prayer book, you know, with Gershurites? Yes, 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 yes. The same Jebusite. Why Everybody was chased out of the land. A few older Jebusites were sitting in Jerusalem and not moving. Here what Rashi says, here a clear Rashi. That if you don't learn, you don't know. But if you learn, you know. They were able, as she says. Continue. But we're not permitted. But we're not permitted. What does this mean, not permitted? Who didn't allow them? Because. Because Abraham had made a covenant with them when he bought the double tiered Machpelah cave from them. They were not Yebusites. Oh, what was it? That's a bad idea. When, he, when Abraham bought the cave of Machpelah, you hear what Rashi says? He made a promise that he will never, that he and his children will never conquer the land, the, the Temple Mount. Abraham made this promise to mm -hmm. the to the Jebusite? No, yeah, it's in English, my friend, because right. Abraham why? has why? made why? a covenant why? with them. What's, What's the purpose? Written and not signed. Huh? Why, was, why would he? To, to make this covenant with. I'm also very upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> we should call Abraham out and we should make a, get to the bottom of it. 
Yeah. Was it a trade for the cave? No. no. He, said, he, paid, yeah. he, paid, he paid for the cave. But, he, but the guys didn't want, the deal? <laughs> they didn't even want to pay, sell them for money. A part of the deal was that it doesn't bother the, the Temple Mount. You never heard about it. I never heard about it until today then. Mm -hmm. Even it's Rashi, I must tell you that I asked my son if he ever heard about it. And he tells me, it's Rashi, he says it in today's parsha. <laughs> <laughs> David told me it's right, right here. He tells me if he would learn the Rashi <laughs> yesterday, you <laughs> <he> would know. <laughs> Pays to have smart son. I found that in the book, I looked in the book of Samuel. I wanted to see when actually they made it to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Then I start to read and I said, there's a whole story about Abraham didn't make it. Then I turned to Levi and I said, you ever heard the story? He tells me, yeah, it's an hour of big sponge. I didn't know this Rashi. <laughs> he referred me to this Rashi. Now, why Abraham made it? Obviously, they knew that the Temple Mount is an important place for Abraham. It's a holy site. And they didn't want the Jews to take it. Everybody wanted it. That they made a deal with Abraham that he will not take, he will give him the cave of Machpelah, in condition that he doesn't touch this place. More than that, there is a story in the book of uh, Bereshit, in the book of Parshas Lech Lecha, that Abraham made a covenant with Avimelech. Remember the story? They made a covenant, and the Avimelech told them, if you will not be this covenant, you should be loyal to me, for me, for my child, for my grandchild, and my great-grandchild. Then another place in the Talmud says that this where the promise was made from Abraham to Avimelech that he will not that what, what he promised and what was the covenant about not to take Jerusalem. No matter how you slice it, it was a promise from Abraham not to touch Jerusalem. Therefore, when the people of Judah came, they couldn't, he says, the Torah says, the book of Joshua says, they couldn't conquer Jerusalem. What do you mean they couldn't? They were not permitted. Because Abraham promised not to touch it. Let's continue. I just finished the Rashi. They call Jebusite, it doesn't make a difference. The, this is why it said, it is said, unless, you see it, the Rashi? Number nine, the little number 98, you see? Mm -hmm. Unless... You cast aside downfall. Louder, no. Unless you cast aside the blind and the lame, the statues on which the oath was inscribed. What is this for heaven's sake? <laughs> they cast aside the line and the blind. What line? What blind? What is he talking about? You know what he's talking about? The King David came to conquer the Jebusite. The Jebusite told him, you cannot come in. Unless they, there is a strange verse there, unless you cast the, the, the aside the blind and the lame. What does this mean? Look 99. The, the note in the bottom, bottom, on this page 99 in the small mm -hmm. print. The blind? The blind was a sightless representation of the patriarch Itzak, who became blind on his old age. Continue. The, the lame? lame was a crippled representation of the patriarch Yaakov, who was lamed by his battle with the angel. Abraham oath was inscribed in the mouth of the statues. Okay, here's a strange story. They made two statues in front of the entrance to the Jebusite to Jerusalem, to the little Jerusalem that was at that time. One was a blind statue, and one was a lame statue a handicapped, an invalid statue. One was representing Isaac. They knew later, that was done later after the promise. Isaac was blind in the later of his years. The other one was Jacob. Remember the story with Jacob? He was pushed on his... And they made, they, they wanted to make the two statues to remind the Jews about. Look how they did it, this man does. They degraded Isaac and degraded Jacob. Jacob was, was handicapped for a minute, so to speak. And they inscribed in their mouths, according to one explanation, they put a paper in their mouth, the promise of Abraham 
not to conquer the Jebusite land. Then when King David came, it's written in the book of Samuel, chapter, <laughs> you know, this, I think, five, uh, Samuel, second, two, chapter five, I think. Yeah, where is this written? Um, the land, the land, number 99, uh, number 98, one second, I'll tell you. Samuel 2, yeah, 5, 6, five, six yeah, 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 very good. King David was told that he could not enter the, the territory of Yevus so long as the blind and the lame were there. You see it? That mm -hmm. means to say that he came there, he says he wants, he's going to conquer. They told him a message, you cannot, you remove this. What he meant with, he said you remove that is, can you go against the promise of your forefathers? Abraham promised he will not cancel the land. That how can, that's why nobody ever rushed to conquer Jerusalem. Because our great grandfather Abraham promised he will not conquer the land. Now the biggest problem here, <laughs> if you break the promise, then the cave of Machmeira is not doesn't belong to Abraham. So no, a person wants to be buried in a place that belongs to him. Not good to be buried in a place that doesn't yours. It's not yours. It's not, it's not good for the soul. Not good for anything. Then here, if we are stealing from them, if we break the deal, then the deal is not a deal. What King David did? King David asked on somebody else to, to remove the two statues. But what was what was the what was the justification for conquering Jerusalem? Abraham made a promise for three generations, for four generations. He need not make a promise forever and ever. As he said to Avimelech, I will not lie to you. Avimelech told him, to me, to my son, to my grandchild, to my great grandchild, whatever. But King David came. How long was King David from, from Abraham? A thousand, a thousand years, no? Is that right? King David was the... Well, King David, David was like from 3,000 years. From Balak. 3,000. From Balak. And Abraham was 4,000 years, right? 1948 was Abraham, right? No. And, and 3,000 years ago was it was a, a, a Jerusalem. 30, 32, 3,300 years ago was Sinai. Right? Sinai. And 3,000 years ago was Jerusalem. No, the damage we have. I think we have 1,000 years, more or less. That 1,000 years later, King David finally conquered Jerusalem. And you have two questions here. Question number one, why the first question we ask, why God doesn't mention Jerusalem in the Bible? Question number two, the real question that bothered me all the years, why actually the Jews didn't conquer Jerusalem? The answer for the second question is that the Jewish people were not allowed to conquer Jerusalem. They didn't have a permission. Until King David came with the permission, so to speak, of the prophet and God, and he knew that, that this promise was not forever and ever, and he conquered Jerusalem against the will, and then he paid them for it. Why pay them for it? Because then the justification on Kevo Machpelah should be, should be okay. No matter what, we paid you for it. We forced you to buy it, to give it to us, and then we paid you for it. Why isn't this a little bit more clear in the biblical text? Why does it take some Rashi and, you know, kind of yeah, yeah, twisting yeah, yeah. Uh, in a pretzel to do that? To a point that I never heard about it. <laughs> exactly. I'll tell you. Because... I, why it's not written clearly? That maybe by answering the second question, we will understand the first question. Maybe this will answer this too. Maybe it was a quiet thing. My man, this is asking the question, why Jerusalem is not mentioned in the Bible? A simple question. Hebron is mentioned in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. What other cities are mentioned in the Bible? Jewish Shiloh. cities? Shiloh. Huh? Shiloh. Shem. Shem. In, the, in the five books of Moses, I'm talking about. Shechem, Be'er Sheva. These are three cities mentioned in the Bible. Sodom. Sodom, yeah. Sodom is not such a Jewish city, but it mentioned in the Bible, yeah. But Be'er Sheva, Shechem, Hebron, Bethlehem, Bethel, Ashdod, Ashdod in the five books of Moses. In five books of Moses. It's a Philistine territory. Yeah. Yafo. Yafo, I don't think it's mentioned. No, Yafo is not mentioned. In the Bible, I don't remember. Why not Jerusalem, for heaven's sake? That Maimonides gives three answers. In the book of the book of the perplex, the guide of the perplex, he brings three answers. 
Number one, he says that the Gentiles, the rest of the world, should not know if they will know that this is our, this is it. This is the place that everybody wants to go there. They will also fight for it and take this place from the Jewish people. It's expensive real estate. Why suddenly the Muslims want Jerusalem? If the Jews want it, they want it too. The Christians want it. Every religion claims Jerusalem is their place. It's not written in the, in the, in the Quran. It doesn't change anything. It's still they want it. That's why God didn't write it in the Bible to protect, the, to protect it from the Gentiles, from the rest of the world. It shouldn't be famous. That's one explanation. Then there is a second explanation, a little more, a little more painful. The second explanation is if the Jewish people would know that Jerusalem is the place that God is chosen, right? The place that I will chose, I will bring, I will this. <coughs> the Jews would fight for it. Every tribe would say, I want it. My land. My territory. Look, it was in the territory of Judah and Benjamin. The two tribes that survive until today are Judah and Benjamin. The ten tribes are gone, right? Then everybody who has a little brains wants to live next to them. Wants the place that God has chosen. Like the Jewish people are the chosen. There is a place that God chose. A people that God chose. It's all the same thing. Everybody will fight for it. Then he says, also he makes an explanation that God wanted to reward us for, just go. I don't have to tell you where to go. Wherever, you, wherever I want you to, I'll bring you, I'll bring you. Who was this, like this, got, got such an order to go and without telling him where to go? Abraham. Abraham. God told them, Lech Lecha. Lech Lecha where? I don't know. Lech Lecha, go. We'll find a place, don't worry, just go. And you're right, when the Jews left Egypt, they, they knew they're going to Israel, but where, what, where, now? As the prophet Jeremiah says, I remember you the days that you trusted me and you went, in, and you, and you went after me with, with faith, because they, did know where they, were, they didn't really know where they're going. More than that I saw today. You know, it's written in the book of Exodus, it's written that God... When God took the Jews out of Egypt, he did, took him in a round and about way. And he didn't take him through the land of Philistines. You know why? Because of this. Because of the promise that Abraham made. He didn't want to take him straight, so to speak. I don't know how this works out geographically. But that was the, case, the reason also. But what's the real reason? Why God? That this all these explanations can explain why the Jewish people didn't uh, f uh, fought for Jerusalem maybe a little earlier because they didn't want that the Gentiles should know they want to create a fight. But what's the real reason? What was the question everybody was asking? Why why Jerusalem is not mentioned in the Bible? Mm -hmm. What's the real reason? Well, we if it took 400 years plus to get there, yeah. and if we had known early on, oh, it's Jerusalem that we're going to, they might have gone there a little bit sooner. A little sooner, yeah. yeah. What's the real reason? I think I, I might have it. What? No, go ahead. God, was, God wanted them to be um, prepared, they wanted, like a little more holy, so they could prepare the uh, sacrifices. The real reason is <laughs> that God says, Everywhere I take Jews is the chosen place. The chosen place is wherever I will take you. Today it's Shiloh, tomorrow is Jerusalem. Obviously Jerusalem is the holy city, no question about it. Shiloh didn't become holy. But ultimately the place that God will choose you means every place that a Jew goes. And he makes it a place of God, a place of Judaism. This is the house of God. This is the place that God chose. And therefore God took us to a journey all around the world. Not in one place. Is that the idea behind the synagogue then? That's what the synagogue is all about. That's what exile is all about. What was the problem at the end of the second temple? Rabbi Yochanan Mezak, I told his friends, guys, don't kill yourself for the building. They want the building. Tell them to take the building. We'll move on. Rabbi Yochanan Menzakai said, let's take the Torah and move to Yavne. And that's what he did. 
And since then he set the tone. We are not tied to a place. We are not tied to a building. We cannot learn Torah here, we'll go there. More than that, not just because we cannot, therefore we have to go somewhere else. The ultimate goal of Jews is to go everywhere, to go all over the world and to bring the, 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 the word of God. To, reckon, to serve God everywhere. To share God with the rest of the world, not just with ourselves. We have an obligation to do it with everybody. That means the chosen place. Therefore, 21 places in the, five, in the book of Deuteronomy, the place that God chose, the, I didn't want to irritate you, there's another 10, place, 10 part times in this parasha that God says it, that the Torah says it. Why? Where is the place? Wherever God takes you. You said in the beginning, maybe it has to do with the desert, that they wait by the cloud of glory. Yes. It's written that the cloud of glory is with the Jews forever. Wherever they go, the God, the God took us, we were torn out of, we went to Yavne, from the, the southern side of Israel. Then we went to the northern side of Israel. Then we went to Babylon. Then we went to Rome. Then we went to Spain. Then we went to Poland. Then we went to New Zealand. We are everywhere. Because we have a job to make every place a place that God chose. It goes, you understand, it goes both ways. That's why we're insulting. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. What, what do you do in the place that God chose us? That some places God chose and then brought us there, like Jerusalem. Some places God brings us there, and because of that, he's choosing the place. We make it a chosen place by God. We make it a holy place. Why is Solon a chosen place? Until now it wasn't chosen. Come, when Jews come here and build a shul and learn Torah and serve Hashem and do mitzvahs, this becomes a chosen place. What Hashem wants us to offer sacrifices? Ola and Zevach. Ola means a burned offering, and Zevach means a peace offering. A burned offering is an offering that is completely for God. A peace offering means a peace for God, a peace for me, and a peace for the Levi and the Kohen, whatever. What does this mean in today's world? Wow, well, in, in Solomon we have a burned offering and a peace offering. A burned offering is a mitzvah that you do just for God. When I put on film, nobody benefits. Not me, not you, not anybody. Just for God. When I say the blessing over the Lord, nobody benefits. When I light the candles on Hanukkah, nobody. It's burned offering. Then there is a peace offering. And I give charity. It's for God, but somebody else benefits from it. A kiddish is like a peace offering. You share food it others. Then every year we go and we have a Ola and a Zevach, a burned offering and a peace offering, it becomes a holy place because the chosen place for God. Now this is the fundamental belief and philosophy of Chabad. I'll tell you a story. If you remember in the first Lebanon war, the whole purpose of the war was to chase out Yasser Arafat and the PLO from Lebanon. Where they went? North Africa. Libya, right? Specific place. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember. Was it Algeria? Close. Tunisia. Tunisia. Tunisia, that's right. They went to Tunisia. Now the PLO is going to Tunisia. There was a Jewish community in Tunisia. Then the Israeli um, secret service decided we have to ch take the Jews out of Tunisia to save them. They sent agent, secret agent, and told them they found a way out to get them out. Told them, pack your pack, lach, we'll help you to run away from them. I talked to one, a second, a third person, a fourth person, a fifth person. It became clear that the Jews don't leave. Why? There was a Chabad rabbi in Tunisia who said, the rabbi said, don't leave. It's in the book. I just heard it. <laughs> don't leave! Then... And they realized that if the Chabad rabbi says don't leave, it means the Rebbe said that in New York, that if you want to move the people, you better go speak to the Lubavitcher Rebbe. <laughs> that the head of the Shabak, the Shimbet Israeli Secret Service, went to New York to meet with the Rebbe. I think he met with the Rebbe in the Rebbe's house because it was a very secret meeting. And he told the Rebbe, you want to save the Jews. The Rebbe told him, I have information from Washington, I have from my, my ways of knowing that the Jews in Tunisia are not in danger. Nothing will happen to them. 
And therefore, there's no reason to pull them out. Rebbe says, I have my, my connections. I know my, I know information basically that you don't know. What it was is, what I understand l- later, the Tunisian government made a deal with the PLO that they don't touch one Jew on their ground. I can do in Israel whatever you want, not here. This guy, the head of the, of the Israeli Shimbet, was interviewed on a on video, 20, uh, to 15 years later, says, oh, I think, I, this is. what the Rebbe told him, the Rebbe told him, I don't believe in dismantling Jewish communities. There's a Jewish community in Israel, should continue to be. An individual wants to make Aliyah to Israel, God bless him. But you are not closing down Jewish communities. More than that, the Rebbe told him. From a political point of view for Israel, it's proven that everywhere there is a strong Jewish community, usually this government is more supportive of Israel. Because the Jews have power, they help the government, they have people in the government, they give money, whatever it is, this pe- these governments are so... Then it's good for Israel to have a Tunisian community, Jewish community. This guy says, I disagree with the Rebbe. Basically, it was the Zionist philosophy and the Rebbe's philosophy. The Jews have to be everywhere. Now, let's see the irony of history. What happened later? What happened with Yasser Arafat after being in Indonesia? Where really he went? To Gaza. To Gaza. To Israel. To the West Bank. Right? Who invited him to the West Bank into Gaza? Israel. Mm-hmm. That Israel wanted to save the Jews from the PLO and therefore they wanted to sneak him out and to take him from Tunisia to Israel. And what happened in the end? The Jews are in Tunisia until today and the Israelis invited, it. if you bring a Jew from Tunisia to Israel, you put him in more danger because eventually Yasser Arafat with the PLO, with the bombs, with the bossing, with the blowing up of the bossing was in Jerusalem, not in Tunisia. Then the Rebbe was right. PLO did not one Jew in Tunisia the Jews are still in Tunisia, and the Israelis, with their smart wisdom and knowledge, brought Yasser Arafat and the PLO. They themselves bought them. They couldn't bring the Jews, so they brought the PLO. The whole war in, in Lebanon, in, in, with Lebanon was to chase them away even further. He shouldn't be close to Israel. That eventually, because he was so nice and he got the Nobel Peace Prize, therefore he came back to Israel. They loved him so much. And now we're enjoying it now in Gaza. This is the fruit of bringing the PLO to Israel. What, what the philosophy behind it is, there is Judaism everywhere. The place that God chose, we will make every place a place that God chose. We are going and serving Hashem wherever God takes you. Every place that God takes you. Why He takes you there? Not for any other reason. It takes you to serve God. That's why it's not written in Jerusalem the Bible.